tonight I want to have an honest conversation. I want to talk about something that a lot of people have always talked about very openly. It's been debated many times, you know, and I think that it's time to bring it up again. You know, when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh! Hand traps is something that is pretty prolific. Hand traps have been utilized for a very long time in the game. Going all the way back to cards like DD Crow and uh I think I think it's called Electric Lizard or cards or cards like that way back in the day that just had obscure effects. Like hand traps have always been around. Karibo, the first hand trap. Honestly, I think hand traps are something that are pretty cool, pretty awesome. It allows you the opportunity to interact on your very first turn before you actually take your first official turn. So hand traps are pretty important. You know, they play a key role. And I think that what makes hand traps so interesting and so uh, versatile is that hand traps can be utilized strategically and based on a dualist skill level based on the knowledge of their deck, their opponent's deck, and even the greater library or knowledge base of Yu-Gi-Oh! as a whole is on full display. Because before that duelist sat down at that locals, at that regionals, at that YCS, at the worlds, at Master Duel, on... Any type of format of Yu-Gi-Oh! where you can use a hand trap. They had to make a decision while they were at home building the deck. What they were going to face up against. What they were going to need to defeat the opponent. So they got to make a strategic choice. When I came back to Yu-Gi-Oh! From a very, very long hiatus... You know, I kept in touch with the game by playing Duel Links. And Duel Links didn't have any hand traps. But when I got back to Yu-Gi-Oh!, that was one of the first things I had to wrap my mind around. And in a format of Yu-Gi-Oh!, where Maxi does not exist, hand trap selection, your go second, your go first card selection is so much more strategic because you cannot rely on a blanket card like Maxi. And the reason why I want to bring this up is because I want to really draw a strong contrast to another blowout hand trap. You know, I I don't think we really need to go deeply into Maxi And what Maxi does and how Maxi works and why, you know, Maxi is disliked. I think we all know that. It's a simple card. Activate at any time. If your opponent does any special summoning, continuously draw cards. But this argument isn't to be fair or level or for me to talk about all the pros for Maxi. I just want to talk about. Just this one key difference between a card like Maxi and Nibiru. When I came back to Yu-Gi-Oh, I had to learn a lot. I had to get my head around all the new methods of summoning, including from where I stopped, Link, Xyz, Pendulum, everything basically after Synchro, I had to learn again. And then on top of learning everything like that, and then the master rule, I had to make sure I learned the meta 
and had a deep enough understanding to play the correct hand traps. Now, when you're playing manual Yu-Gi-Oh, there's no counters or no glowing icons to tell you how to duel. So you just got to know how to use your cards at the correct time or you will be corrected and embarrassed by and embarrassed by your opponent. Like like someone looking you in the face, explaining to you how your own card works is humiliating. So it makes you learn quick. So, for example, having a Nibiru in hand and trying to activate it on the fourth summon. Or trying to activate it in the battle phase. Yeah. Things like that can happen. You'll be corrected and you'll have to learn from your mistakes and become a better duelist and learn how to utilize Nibiru in a way that can stop your opponent at the right time. Figuring out, can my opponent extend beyond this point or is this just the correct time to use Nibiru? Or are you just flopping it down because it's the fifth summon? Now compare all the thought that goes into the play, the intellect that you even have to do just to put in the ratio of Nibiru's in your deck. Do I do three or do I do two? Do I do one? All easy questions for Max C. What do I do? Yes, yes, Yes and yes. Yes to all those things. Add three, play immediately, and draw as I please. Now, look, I'm not telling you that Max C is just an auto win card because it's not. Because you can draw a gazillion cards, and if your deck is terrible, your deck is terrible. But I'm just going to leave you with these final thoughts on max C. Okay. Now, when you play max C and I, and I want you to really think about this and be honest with yourself. When you play max C and your opponent just ends their turn, they just scoop. Then you proceed to OTK win the duel whatever fine feels great w feels good man you earned that dub but when you come up against max c and it's your pet deck you come up against max c and it's the brand new deck you just bought you come up against Smack C and all you wanted was a quick test game. It's your lunch break. Disconnections and all kinds of issues. You finally get connected to a duel. You go first. And before you can even contemplate what you're going to do, stand by face Max C. And you have no response. And you know that L is coming. And you're not about to waste your lunch break. On Maxi Challenge. And you close the app. Now you tell me. Does that L feel good? Was the dub really worth it? No, I say no. So I'm telling you, I just don't think Maxi is good for the game. That's it. Like, if Maxi died tomorrow, you wouldn't cry. <laughs> 